A home's electrical system is as complex as it is important to the home's functionality. We invited Tom Morgan, Master Home Inspector and founder of Sound Home Inspection, to inform us on some of the things to watch for when purchasing a home. Tom is licensed in Connecticut and Rhode Island and has some interesting tips to share with us today. When we commence the electrical inspection and the home inspection, we start the inspection on the exterior of the house. Seasoned homeowners and new buyers think that this service drop, which my hand is around, is the ownership of the power company. It is not. And we see over time that this becomes frayed, ultraviolet with the sun, and then we get water into this meter socket, and then it ultimately goes into the electrical panel. And we all know, as new home buyers, seasoned, water and electricity does not work. So we start with our clients, with the agents accompanying us. We look at the weather head at the top, and then we direct our attention here. Because if this has failed, we have issues for safety and also monetary concerns. One thing that we have to be very concerned about as inspectors and as homeowners, these panels have to be accessible. The first thing we're gonna do is open this door. We're gonna look at do we have any rust under the panel, which would be a continuation when we did the uh, outside part of this film talking about water penetration. This is the main service coming in here. As we approach this to do the inspection, we look at the size of the main wire coming in here, where my hand is around here. We want a correlation between that size of the gauge of that wire to the main breaker and we're comfortable here before we take the panel apart. All right, so the next process in the inspection procedure, we'll take the cover of the panel off. Now that the panel cover has been removed, we're looking in here for several things. We're looking in for water penetration that may have come down from a bad connection outside. You notice how bright and shiny this, what these two wires are coming in here. Because of the cost of copper, Today, 99% of these, the feed or the drop is aluminum. So these are the two hot legs coming in. This is a neutral. This is transmitting the power down here. So the next part of the inspection, we are uh, doing a visual inspection to determine the gauge of the wire size in relationship to the breaker. There are numbers on these breakers. That is the amperage of the breaker. We are looking and, and, and inspecting to make sure that the wire size or the gauge or the diameter of the wire is compatible with the amperage. I've seen wires and panels burned. Homeowners come in here. They haven't had the correct allocation between wire size to the breaker. I've seen insulation burn, all kinds of things. We like what we see here. This is a neat job, it's clean. The other issue that comes up for most agents, and they always go, Tom, you got any double taps? Tom, you got any triple taps? What they're asking me, as in baseball with the double tap, but every breaker has a screw on there. We only want one wire per screw. We get in situations where there's two wires represented by my finger on one screw. That's a double tap. So we like what we see here. We've taken this visual mechanical part of the electrical inspection. And what we do is then we take that data, size of the service, 200 amps, type of wiring, whether it's circuit breakers or fuses, the panel manufacturer, whether it's grounded, we talk about continuity polarity. We will take a picture of this panel, whether there are issues or they're not issues, uh, particularly because when you as a purchaser of that home, you have to call the, uh, your broker, your insurance broker or the company, and they're gonna ask you some fundamental questions. Size of the service, that's the amount of amperage. And they're concerned whether there's knob and tube wiring in the house. That information will be placed in the report, so at your disposal when you get closer to closing, you'll have enough data to move forward. These are called junction boxes, like a Y in the road. Uh, the older houses have metal boxes. These happen to be plastic, which is pretty uh, generic. What we're seeing here uh, is that there has to be a cover over this box. 
And what's happened is they've done numerous splices in this box. They can't push the wires in here. Uh, this is a normal method of connection with wire nuts on here, but they ain't got to get a cover on here. They need, might need an extension on here. We do not write in the report a construction method to cure this deficiency. We make an observation, say needs cover, and then we say contact a licensed electrician. We're continuing the inspection in the basement. If you observe this, the licensed electrician is, is drilled a hole here, run this Romex wire. This is correctly done. This is incorrect over here. The homeowner has nailed this uh, Romex wire uh, outside and under the, the, uh, under the floor joist. People, child can get up, do chin-ups on there. People can drive a nail in it. If you were to swing back here, and you were to put a hook or a nail in here, you're not gonna hit that wire. So this is correct. This is homeowner. We would make notes and photograph this in the report. The next part of the inspection is we're concerned again, electricity, safety. We're in the bathroom. The electrical code talks about something called GFCI, ground fault circuit interrupter. Those Installations or receptacles need to be in what we call water environments. Bathrooms, kitchens, outside receptacles. So what we do, we use a test device. We plug it into the receptacle. We check the lighting sequence. We know from this whether it's got correct continuity, polarity, and ground. Then we depress the test button, which I'm going to do and the lights went out. We are simulating whether this works or not. Now we're walking through the house. We do a random sampling of the receptacles. And what we're checking for is proper wiring of the receptacle. Do we have an open ground? Do we have reverse polarity? How is that determined? That's determined with this device. And we, we plug this in here, and then we can determine if everything's wired correctly. This device also has a GFCI capability, but we don't use it for that. And the other thing we're doing here is we're checking whether there's a broken prong on the receptacle, and of equal importance, is that receptacle loose? After completing the uh, random testing of the receptacles, we deal with wall switches. We check these because sometimes there are multiple locations to turn these switches on, here in the hallway or where else. They have to be wired sometimes on a three-way switch or with a traveler. These things get fouled up sometimes. Homeowner gets in there, junior uh, electrician. So we randomly check these switches as part of the inspection. In conclusion, electricity is dangerous. It's dangerous to the licensed home inspector. It's dangerous to the homeowner. You have to have a very knowledgeable home inspector. You have to have the right tools and we spend a lot of time on this. And that information is transmitted in the home inspection report, so you have data for, with which you can communicate with the lender, with your agent, and with the insurance company. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed Tom's insights on inspecting electrical service. With a special thanks to Tom Morgan from Sound Home Inspection, thanks for watching.